Hey guys, this is going to be your literature English lesson um, for Monday, May 4th. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at this next story in the book called The Skater of Ghost Lake. It is by William Rose Benet, and uh, it's pages 64 through 65. So here we go. Is what we're gonna, that's the first page, page 64. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. If you notice... Uh, you actually do not have any vocab this week, you lucky ducks. Uh, so all you have are on page 65. You have the three questions. Again, I want good three to five sentence paragraphs answering each one of those questions. Um, if you'll notice, number three on page 65 actually is what actually happens in this poem. Um, so because that is one of the questions... I am not going to be giving you a summary of this poem, so you're going to need to make sure that you take your time and that you read through this poem very carefully, or as I'm getting ready to read it to you, make sure and just play this video several times while you read it so that when you can hear me reading it and as I'm reading it and you are, as I'm reading it aloud to you and you're able to listen to it, you can be reading it on your own and kind of get that double coverage and hopefully between the two of us, uh, you'll be able to decipher what exactly is occurring in this poem. Um, <clears throat> I do want you to pay particular attention to the use of alliteration and rhythm in this poem. Okay, Alliteration is simply the use of letters that be, or not letters, of words <laughs> that begin with the same sound or the same letters, okay? So, the swift, slinky, super silly, super superfluous sentinel, okay, whatever, right? How I just use those series of S's. That would be an example of alliteration, right? Or beginning balls bounce better. Uh, you know, there we go. Uh, you've got the three sounds, the three Bs, three in a row, right? That's it, another example of alliteration. So again, just pay particular use to attention to the author's use of alliteration in this poem. Those repeating sounds, those similar sounds, those similar letters at the beginning of each of the words, okay? Um, also, this poem is broken up. Each of the stanzas is a couplet, okay? And what a couplet is is that two of the lines, the two lines next to each other, the first two lines will rhyme with each other, and the last two rhymes of each stanza will um, rhyme with each other, right? So that means you have a total of four lines <coughs> per stanza. Excuse me. <coughs> Man. Ugh. Goodness gracious. So again, you have a total of four lines per stanza. The first two lines rhyme with each other. And the last two rhyme, lines rhyme with each other, okay? So it's broken into couplets, right? Couple, right? meaning two couplets, two, right? So the two lines, they rhyme with each other. So the two things I really want to pay attention to is how the breaking down of these lines into couplets really um, affects the, the rhythm of the poem, okay? And, and so, again, the two things I really want you to pay attention to are going to be the use of alliteration and rhythm, right? That rhythm is produced by the use of couplets, by turning each of the four lines, two of the lines, two each, into couplets. And that rhyming pattern, driven by the use of couplets, is what's going to contribute to the rhythm of the poem itself, okay? And so... Um, just pay attention to, again, the alliteration, the rhythm, and the use of the couplets. Um, our author is William Rose Benet. He was born in 1886. He died in 1950. He is the older brother, brother of poet Stephen Vincent Benet. And he was an American editor, poet, and novelist. After graduating from Yale University, Benet edited the Saturday Review of Literature and several other magazines, and wrote many volumes of poetry. Okay, so he's a very 
um, famous literary figure in the uh, literary circles of the United States. Um, he's wrote many influential poems. Uh, those of you who are, if any of you are into poetry and um, have read, ever, you know, taken it upon yourself to read poetry on your own, um, more than likely you have come across William Rose Benet or his um, brother Stephen Vincent Benet. Um, you, you've come across some of their poems in one way or another. Um, you might have actually maybe come across the poem that we're going to be reading today because it is a relatively famous poem. Um, <clears throat> so, again, as we get into this poem itself, it is only two pages, so you know what? You guys got it yourselves a little bit of a light week. That's one of the reasons why I uh, do it the way that we do, where I go just story to story. So where there will be some weeks where we got a longer story, and it means we're going to have a little bit more work because we have some more vocab. You're just going to have to work a little bit harder making sure that you understand the story so that you can answer the questions. And then you're going to have some weeks where we have a shorter story and, uh, you know, you're going to get a little bit of a break. Okay, so you're, you're welcome. I'm giving you guys a little bit of an easier week this week um, in that, like I said, you don't have any vocab. But again, you do have the three questions on page 65. Make sure you answer them with good three to five sentence paragraphs per question and you really need to be paying attention to what is going on in this poem so that you can answer question number three, which is asking you what is actually going on in this poem, okay? So, with that being said, let's get into the reading. The Skater of Ghost Lake by William Rose Benet. Ghost Lake's a dark lake, a deep lake and cold. Ice black as ebony, frostily scrolled. Far in its shadows a faint sound whirs. Steep stand the sentinel, deep, dark firs. A brisk sound, a swift sound, a ring, tinkle ring. Flit, flit, a shadow, with a stoop and a swing. Flies from a shadow through the crackling cold. Ghost lake's a deep lake, a dark lake and old. Leaning and leaning, with a stride and a stride, Hands locked behind him, scarf blowing wide. Jeremy Randall skates, skates late, Star for a candle, moon for a mate. Black is the clear glass now that he glides, Crisp is the whisper of long lean strides, Swift is his swain, but pricked ears hark. None comes to ghost late, Late after dark, Cecily only, yes, it is she, Stealing to Ghost Lake, tree after tree, Kneeling in snow by lake still, by still lake side, Rising with feet winged, gleaming to glide. Dust of the ice swirls, here is his hand, Brilliant his eyes burn, now as was planned, Arm across arm twined, laced to his side, out on the dark lake, lightly they glide. Dance of the dim moon, a rhythmical reel, a swain, a swift tune, scur of the steel. Moon for a candle, made for a mate. Jeremy Randall skates, skates late. Black as if lacquered, the wide lake lies. Beneath its frost fume, eyes seek eyes. Souls are a, soul, a sword edge, tasting the cold. Ghost Lake's a deep lake, a dark lake, and old. Far in the shadows, here faintly begin, like a string plucked, plucked of a violin. Muffled in mist on the lake's far bound, swifter and swifter, with a low singing sound. Far in the shadows and faint on the verge, of blue cloudy moonlight, see it emerge. Flit, flit, a phantom, with a stoop and a swing. Ah, it's a night's bird, burdened of wing. Pressed close to Jeremy, laced to his size, side, <clears throat> Cecily Culver, dizzy you glide. Jeremy Randall sweepingly veers, out on the dark ice, far from the piers. Jeremy, sweetheart, what do you fear? Nothing, my darling, nothing is here. Jeremy, sweetheart, what do you flee? Something I know not, something I see. 
Swayed to a swift stride, brisker of pace, leaning and leaning, they race and they race. Ever that whirring, that crisp sound thin, like a string plucked, plucked of a violin. Ever that swifter and low swinging sound, sweeping behind them, winding them round. Gasp of their breath, now that the chill flakes fret, icy black as ebony, blacker like jet. Eyes shooting fangs forth, sudden like spears, crackling of lightning, a roar in their ears. Shadowy a phantom swerves off from its prey. No, it's a night bird, flit, flits away. Low winging moth owl, home to your sleep. Ghost lakes, a still lake, a cold lake and deep. Faint in its shadows a far sound whirs. Black stand the ranks of its sentinel furs. That would be the end of the reading of The Skater of Ghost Lake. So again, guys, pay attention. All right, you really got to be um, kind of on top of it to really get what just happened in that story. What was the fate of Jeremy Randall? and his companion, Cecily Culver, right? You really have to be paying attention <coughs> to get what that, what actually occurred in this poem, okay? Make sure you can play that over and over again. Like I said, pay attention to the alliteration, pay attention to the rhythm, pay attention to the use of the couplets. Um, other than that, guys, uh, I hope you have a great day, and uh, I look forward to meeting with each of you. Take it easy.